This is Twit. Ted Nelson is is really a legend, a legendary fellow living. In his, he's still in his houseboat in Sausalito, California. He joins us now via Skype uh, to talk about Xanadu, which in 1995 Wired magazine called the longest running <laughs> vaporware project of all time. I take it you didn't. Which shows that he knew nothing about computer history. <laughs> <laughs> I, list, I can give you a list of 10 vaporware projects that are far more expensive and long running. I think you're right. And uh, in fact, as time's gone by, there's even more now. Yeah, of course. Ted, welcome uh, to Triangulation. I I'm thrilled to have you on. Thank you for joining us. We have absorbed more, no more than 200 man years and no more than $5 million. That's chump change. Nothing. Yeah. So uh, let's, let's start uh, back in the, in the early 60s when you first created this concept of hypertext uh, what, tell me a little bit about the background and where it came from and what you were trying to accomplish. I was a media guy. Um, in my, uh, <laughs> when I entered college, I'd already been an actor on stage and, and, uh, and uh, TV due to my father. And, and uh, I had already, uh, in college, I wrote a number of plays. I believe I wrote the first rock musical, though everybody wants to contest, contest that. I had my own magazine. I, I, did, I did this half-hour movie comedy as my first film. And uh, I published my first book and produced a long playing, playing record. So I was very much into media of all times. And to me, all media are alike. You think about the effects you want, and you think about what are the technicalities it will take to give you those effects. So when, uh, when I took a computer course in graduate school, I said, holy smoke, you can put interactive screens on them. Now, for some reason, this was interactive screens were instantly obvious to me. As soon as I saw a picture of a guy sitting at the screen with a light pen, I got the whole picture. And uh, it took other people a long time, but I was a media guy. I said, screens, I can do that. So uh, all media are alike. You figure out what effects you want, and then you figure out what technicalities are required to bring about those effects, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I think the, dis so the disadvantage the computer people had at that time was that they were very uh, keenly aware of the limitations of the existing hardware, and they, they couldn't think out of the box at what might be possible. You were well, way ahead of your time, really. Well, in some ways, but Moore's law had already been stated as Moore hadn't stated it, but everybody knew right. that there, right. this was what was happening. And uh, even though <clears throat> uh, cathode ray tubes, uh, display, interactive displays, were only being used by Cheyenne Mountain nuclear defense and... <laughs> and uh, and uh, hackers at MIT, <laughs> yeah. And air traffic control, those were the two, the, the yes. two series at the time. The fact that the price was going to come down, everybody would have them. And so I immediately said, okay, we're going to have a new world of publishing. People would be able to publish from screen to screen across the world without any publishing companies in between. I, <clears throat> having published my own books, I come from a line of self-publishers. My grandmother published her own books. My great-grandfather published his books. So uh, self-publishing was to me the, uh, the desired uh, aspect because publishers, you see, get in the way with their... Uh, conventional and stereotype notions. <laughs> if you want to say something original, you have to publish yourself. So, uh, so, I've, so making the world safe for sub -publish self publishers on a broad scale was one of one of the things I was thinking of. But then, <clears throat> the issue of the structure of text. Now, I'd always been frustrated by sequential writing. Why does why does writing have to be in a sequence? Because paper is in a sequence. Because we number pages. Why do we number pages? Because they're horizontal, they're, they're they're rectangular, and they're packed in a in a in sheet after sheet. But if we have screens, they don't have to be packed sheet after sheet. We can go to the side. We can go to the top. We can jump to another thing. And there need to be no space limitations. It puzzles me that Wikipedia still makes the so the length of an article based upon the importance that the, of this, the subject has in the eyes of the editors. When I say editors, Wikipedia is a benign fraud. You don't edit Wikipedia. You submit changes to the hidden editor. But in any case, uh, figuring out what the new media of the screen would be, that to me was the, uh, was, uh, the highest calling I could think of. 